Hello. Mwah. Hello, my friend. It is Perez Hilton. As you can see by the title of this video, there is so much to talk about today. We're getting into Diddy, Meghan and Harry, Princess Catherine, Britney Spears, Taylor and Travis, and so much more. But first, let me give you all a reminder. I'm Perez Hilton, the queen of all media, the gossip gangsta, the original influencer, and I stream live on YouTube every day, every weekday, Monday through Friday at 7.30 p.m. Eastern, 4.30 Pacific, and I invite you to watch and if you enjoy, I also invite you to become a member of my YouTube channel. I am about to switch the live stream chat to member only because to me, that is a really good perk of membership. I love chatting with my members. I love them giving me topic suggestions. So please interact with me. Hey, Bernice. And uh, if you can, become a member, okay? Uh, we will work our way towards everything that I mentioned, but first, thank you to Villa Azor in Las Vegas. I celebrated my birthday there this weekend. Hoo hoo! I am old AF, and I look it, right? I <clears throat> turned 46 years old on Saturday, and what I wanted to do for my birthday was have a cocktail hour. Well, two hours to be exact. Hey, Bri Ryan. Mwah. I did not want to do a sit down dinner. I wanted to be able to really move around and socialize and talk to all of my guests. And I wanted that for them as well. And the wonderful folks at Villa Azur at the Grand Canal Shops in Las Vegas hosted us. It's one of my favorite restaurants. They had some past hors d'oeuvres. The appetizers were so yummy. They had live music. It was brilliant. And earlier that day on Saturday, I spoke at a conference, which was really meaningful to me because it was this black female Ex exclusively um, organization that was having this empowerment event, a self-help seminar and networking um, afternoon all, all in one. And they saw value in having me at their event. So these phenomenal, inspiring black women welcomed me with open arms and I gave a keynote speech at their event and I also spoke on a panel and they had a little cake for me there and it felt so lovely to be appreciated and respected and to give back and hopefully inspire some people with my, my story and journey and mistakes that I've made and lessons I've learned. So thank you for watching. Let's start off right away with the biggest breaking news of the day, Diddy, the diddler. He is... I don't know, he's done, screwed. I mean, maybe there's a chance that he'll be able to escape legal ramifications, but it's unlikely. If you haven't heard earlier today, I don't even, I haven't even heard of this organization before, not the FBI, but the Department of Homeland Security Investigations, HSI, raided Diddy's homes. Yes, you heard me correctly, plural. His house in Los Angeles and his house in Miami. And, oh my God, I've got to show you this. This is crazy. Not only did they raid his homes, but his sons were handcuffed. I don't know if they were arrested, but look at this photo, Ryan, and everybody else. That's Diddy's son, King, and that's Justin Combs. They were handcuffed and were interrogated by these military-looking HSI people. I would be pooping myself, like, so nervous, like, 
But I think, I mean, obviously I'm older, so I know, you know, don't say anything without a lawyer present. But they're young, you know, like how old is Justin Combs? Let me see. I'm going to guess 24. Justin Combs is 30. Okay. Justin Combs is 30 years old and King Combs is 25. Okay. So I don't know how they might be tied to their father's alleged wrongdoings, but the reason that HSI searched Diddy's homes is because of what they say is an ongoing months long investigation in, um, I can't say it, uh, I'll say it, human. And then, you know, when you're in the car and you're stuck in traffic, you know, human and traffic, you know, what? Diddy is accused of that. And, oh, you know what? Screw it. I'm just going to say it. Social media is weird because sometimes they'll downgrade your videos if you mention phrases like that. But this is an important topic. It's newsworthy. So some very serious allegations about Diddy have been levied about over the last few years. He's denied them all. I felt important to share that. However, I, I was confused about human trafficking. So I looked up the definition before my YouTube live today and it was eye-opening. This is according to a government website. This is according to DHS, okay? The Department, the Department of Homeland Security. It's all tied together. DHS, the Department of Homeland Security, and the organization that went and raided Diddy's homes is Homeland Security Investigations, a subsidiary of the Department of Homeland Security. So DHS.gov on their website explains that human trafficking is this, quote, Human trafficking involves the use of force, fraud, or coercion to obtain some type of labor or commercial sex act. And that's where Diddy is in trouble. I was under the assumption that human trafficking was like selling young women or selling women or, you know, keeping them prisoner and forcing that forcing, you know, immigrants to work uh, and not paying them or, you know, just feeding, I, you know, that, I had the, those misconceptions of human trafficking. But if you use force or fraud or coercion or some other type of labor uh, to, to uh, force or fraud or coercion to obtain a commercial sex act, you're in trouble. You see, Ryan thought the same thing too. Here's why... What happened today is especially problematic for Diddy because they raided both of his main homes. And it's unlikely that even though these allegations have been around for a while, it's unlikely that he trashed all of his phones and laptops and security camera footage or wipe them out. You know what I mean? And this 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 organization, the Homeland Security Investigations Team, HSI, they could now collect his cell phones, his laptops, desktops, and home security footage, which could be used against him in this trial uh, uh, if there is one on human trafficking. The odds of him wiping all that out, throwing it all away, every device, everything. Oh, yeah, yeah. Now people are really like going into conspiracy theory mode, say, alleging that Diddy was involved in Kim Porter's death, his baby mama. I don't know a thing about that, okay? But I do know that Diddy has several children with the late Kim Porter, including two young daughters, twins, Diddy daughters. Uh, 
they are just, well, they're not babies, but they're still very young. They're 17 years old. You know, they're still minors at 17 and, you know, they've been through so much. My heart goes out to, to Diddy's young, young daughters. Oh, what a heavy way to start today, but we've got more to talk about. I want to set the record straight, y'all. Earlier today on my YouTube channel, right here, I uploaded a clip from today's podcast about Meghan and Harry and their statement on the Princess of Wales, which upset a lot of people. I want to, for the record, publicly state that I do not dislike Meghan and Harry, okay? I don't particularly care for them, but I also don't care for William and Catherine. I don't dislike them either. It's like, I'm not a, a, one of their royal subjects. I'm not a fan of theirs. I am, I wouldn't use the word fan, but I am fascinated by royalty, and not just British royalty, but royalty worldwide. I grew up in a Latino household with my Cuban mother reading Hola magazine and me getting them from her when she was done and reading all about the Spanish royal family and Spanish nobility. I've always found the concept of royalty fascinating, especially because I was aware from a young age this is an outdated, archaic concept in modern times. So that duality of the subjects in many of the countries still liking the monarchy and them being useless entities. So there's just something there. And it's also just another form of celebrity, but they don't do anything other than, I mean, well, Meghan and Harry are doing things now, like their podcast and their Netflix documentary, but... William and Catherine and the British Royals, they just do charity work, which, God, being a British Royal sucks. No wonder Harry wanted to leave. Like, how can you have fun? Where's all the fun? Like, they have to do so many royal engagements, sometimes, many times, often, multiple royal engagements every day charity work, volunteering or showing up to the opening of this and the opening of that and shaking all the hands and doing tons of chit chat. Like my ears would be talked off with all that small talk, like and being polite and being under a microscope. So I don't dislike Harry and Meghan. I don't dislike William and Harry and, and Catherine. I don't like either of them. I am intrigued by the concept, but not particularly intrigued by either couple, okay? They're both, they're all boring to me. Like, Harry and Meghan are boring outside of the British royal family. The only thing that makes them interesting to me is their connection to King Charles and Prince William and the family. So, I opined on my podcast today that their statement on Princess Catherine's cancer reveal was disrespectful. Let, I don't want to repeat myself because I try to give you my YouTube fram extra things that I haven't spoken about yet on my podcast. So check out today's podcast. It's a different experience with my co-host, Booker. He's great. We're great together. PerezPodcast.com. PerezPodcast.com. I think you would love it. Things that I did not say on the podcast, let me tell you after I read the statement in case you missed it. And thank you for still watching, Ryan. If you want to be like Ryan and chatting live with me during my daily shows on YouTube, please consider becoming a member like Ryan. Your support would be greatly appreciated if you can. Or watch a bunch of these and maybe next month become a member if you can. All right. <clears throat> The statement that Harry and Meghan released read the, like this, quote, we wish health and healing for Kate and the family and hope 
they are able to do so privately and in peace. I will, re- I will briefly recap what I said on the podcast and then add a bunch of extra things that I did not mention. Why did I view this as disrespectful? First of all, they did not, this is a public statement for the media. It's not some private text message or email that they sent Prince William, okay? This is for the masses. She, even though they are no longer senior working royals, they're still going by their royal titles. They signed off as the Duke and Duchess of Sussex, okay? And they didn't have the respect and courtesy and the way that is done of referring to the Dutch, the, the Princess of Wales publicly. The fact that they didn't refer to her as the Princess of Wales or Catherine the Princess of Wales or Princess Catherine, I found that to be disrespectful. And also calling her Kate. They have told us William and her repeatedly have told us that she wants to be known as Catherine. This is a public statement. They should have respected her wishes and called her Catherine. And also, I was going to say something else, but I I lost my train of thought. Wait, what was was my third point? Shoot. Um, Yeah, I think that's everything. Oh, yeah, here's the... I knew there was a third point that I wanted to make. It was just such a cold... Like, I get it. I get it. They're estranged. According to multiple reports... Hi, Michelle! According to multiple reports, William and Catherine did not tell Harry and Meghan about Catherine's cancer before the news was made public. They're estranged, okay? I get it, they're estranged, it's frosty. That statement was frosty. There was no love or warmth there. Strangers wrote more heartfelt, kinder, warmer statements for Princess Catherine than her brother and sister-in-law. And if it's not going to be the right message, then don't release a public message. Or, you know what I think would have been better? This is my expert analysis. A better statement would have been, Harry and Meghan have privately reached out to the Princess of Wales and they hope that her recovery and everything regarding her health remains private and that the media and public can give her that privacy. Something along those lines, you know, like I emphasizing that the, that the communication was between family and private, like that would have been better. I think this was a big misstep in my opinion. And I'm glad that you agree with me, Michelle M. I hope you had a wonderful weekend. All right. In lighter news, let's move on to Tavis. I mentioned on the podcast this morning that Travis Kelsey and Taylor Swift went on vacation in the Bahamas this weekend. Or not this weekend, but recently. Like this last week, they were in the Bahamas on vacation. But then after we were done recording, you see, you guys are getting extra stuff. After they were done recording, we were done recording Photos were released. I used to do things differently than I do now. I wish my YouTube fram that I could show you the photos, but I would get in trouble for that because they are copywritten. You know, these paparazzi's photo agency took photos of Travis and Taylor in the Bahamas, but I will describe them to you. They are so in love. They were kissing in the beach. They, Travis was like grabbing or patting or resting. I don't want to incorrectly describe it, but he had his hand on Taylor's butt. These photos brought me such joy. 
And there are some people claiming that Taylor Swift was body shamed. I did not see that. What really happened were some TikTokers pretending, in my opinion, that Taylor Swift was body shamed because that's a strong angle for a video and they wanted the views. I did not see anybody. I mean, it could have happened, but I didn't see people body shaming Taylor Swift. She looked amazing in her bikini. I did, however, see people body shaming Selena Gomez recently. And that's just sad, you know? Selena has lupus. She has to take medication for that, which affects her weight. Selena is, has bipolar disorder. She has to take medication for that, which also affects her weight. And then here people are, you know, commenting about Selena Gomez's weight. And even though she's a strong woman in her 30s, I can only imagine that, that probably gets exhausting or hurts in some way. I think Selena looks amazing and I love her. And I love you for watching sincerely, truly, from the bottom of my heart, thank you for watching. Don't worry, we still got more to get to. I also love that this gives me the opportunity to clarify things. Over the weekend, if you follow me across social media, I posted this video and on here as well. I posted it on YouTube. If you missed it, it's on my YouTube channel. I added something to the video. I posted a video of Britney Spears dancing. <clears throat> excuse me, dancing. And a lot of people were criticizing me because I commented that I think that was healthy for Britney Spears. Let me elaborate on what I mean by that. Listen, I am not pretending that Britney Spears isn't troubled. I don't live in the land of Delulu. Britney Spears has severe mental health issues. However, her dance videos are not a cry for help. It's the opposite. She doesn't want help. She is refusing treatment. She doesn't take medication. And I'm grateful that Britney is turning to something that's not destructive. Her making these dance videos is a creative outlet. It's a workout. It is a dopamine, dopamine release. It's something that's not drugs or alcohol. So that is a positive. I don't understand how people could view it any other way. You don't have to like it. Her sons don't like it, you know, but her sons are also adults now. Her oldest is 18 and her youngest turns 18 this year. If they don't like what their mom posts on social media, well, too bad. Block her or don't watch her or don't be on social media. Hi, Erna. Erna Beatty in the his house. Appreciate you. So... That's what I meant by that, and I am sticking by it, okay? Also, a big story today, have you guys, have you Ryan or Michelle or Erna or anybody watching the replay or afterwards, have you been following this Shohei Otani story? It's so confusing to me, not because it's sports related, but it doesn't make sense. Shohei Otani is one of the biggest stars in MLB baseball. He plays for the LA Dodgers. So that's, that's, I think that's why the story got back to me because people in Los Angeles are buzzing about this. He is a pitcher and getting a lot of money. And his interpreter, he's Japanese, and his interpreter has been accused of illegal sports gambling and stealing millions of dollars from Shohei Otani to pay off his gambling debts and sending a wire transfer from Shohei Otani's account. 
Here's where I where I'm confused and I don't understand. I mean, I guess, you know, I guess we'll find out more, but how did this interpreter have access to the guy's bank accounts? And I would think when you're dealing with millions of dollars, the bank would make sure that the person has signed off on it and maybe like not relying on an interpreter, like showing him paperwork in Japanese or having their own Japanese interpreter there just to verify that everything is copacetic because we're talking about millions of dollars. So how did the interpreter pull that off? I am not a conspiracy theorist, but some conspiracy theorists are alleging that this is all a cover-up, that it's the, it, that the interpreter is a scapegoat, the fall guy for the baseball player himself. <gasps> Scandal! Juicy! <laughs> all right, some film and television news. I love me some Timothy Chalamet. I saw these photos, which I can't share with you, of Timothy on the set of this new movie playing Bob Dylan. And he looks so much like Bob Dylan. It's wild. A young Bob Dylan, obviously. I'm curious to see how that turns out. Also, an update for all you Euphoria fans, the HBO show with Zendaya and Jacob E. Lordy and Sydney Sweeney production was set to take place this year on season three. And now that's been indefinitely delayed, which means we don't know when season three will happen, but HBO insists that there will be a season three. It'll just premiere four or five years after season two. Unusual, but hey. Uh, all right, my fram, that's everything. Erna, Ryan, Michelle, do you have any questions, comments, concerns, observations, advice that you might need, anything that you want me to talk about? The floor is yours. If not, I might open the comments to everybody for a minute or two. <clears throat> do, do, do. No pressure. No pressure. Let me, um, all right. Every single person watching right now, I have just switched it. So if you want to ask a question, now is your chance. Any plans for Easter? Yes, Ryan, but that is a secret. I'll, sh I'll show you. I like secrets. How about you? Hey, demon child. Hello, Maria. Hey, Ozfly girl. Thank you. Hey, Adam. Hey, love angel. We did have beef, but I've forgiven her. And I would go on her podcast, but I don't. But I think she only has in person guests. Uh, I'm not going to go to Los Angeles to do her podcast. Thank you, Demon Child. Hey, Julia. Hey, Yorlan. That was at the beginning. Well, not the beginning. Diddy was the beginning. I did Megan and Harry towards the middle of today's show, but once the live is over, you can rewind and watch it. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, I asked Fly Girl. Actually, I answer that question. This is a great question. Will everyone leave her alone now? I answer that on my podcast today, PerezPodcast.com. And because I am Perez Adamas and a media expert, I know exactly what's going to happen next. And I tell you all. So listen at PerezPodcast.com. Thank you, love, Angel. Hey, my neighbor, Carol Berger, how are you? Mike, I think I look more like Ron Perlman than Frankenstein, but I could see that. I love you, my inspirations. Thank you, Judy. Hey, your land again. 
Anthony Giovanni, did I know Amy Winehouse? Yes, I did very well. And she sent me this signed for my birthday. Which birthday was that? 20, 30th, for my 30th birthday, she sent me this. One of my most prized possessions next to my Lady Gaga plaque, next to my Justin Bieber plaque, next to my Jonas Brothers platinum plaque. Very, very cool. Thank you, Austin Fly Girl. Thank you, Maria. I was Paco. Appreciate you, Veronica. Thank you, Ashlyn. What's up, Terrence? Yes, Julia. Um, why do I sound like a female? Maybe because I'm a big gay. <laughs> I do, Ausfly girl. Uh, am I related to any celebrities? Yes, Paris Hilton is my niece. <laughs> and a reminder, I stream live on YouTube every weekday. That's Monday through Friday at 7.30 p.m. Eastern, 4.30 Pacific. The chats are almost like 95% member only. So please, if you can, consider becoming a member. And if not, watching is greatly appreciated. You can also comment when the live stream is over. So if you're watching the replay, please comment, please like, please share. And I will see you tomorrow at 7.30 p.m. Eastern, 4.30 Pacific. Extra special thanks to all of my members. I love you. Mwah. Bye.